ESMA 2022 has been rather exciting in, in terms of the fact that we've had so many abstracts and presentations looking at endocrine resistant uh, disease of hormone receptor positive or two negative metastatic breast cancer. Two very interesting abstracts that I'm going to be discussing are one, uh, lazoxifan versus fulvestrant in those patients with endocrine resistant uh, disease who had progressed on a CDK4-6 inhibitor and aromatase inhibitor and also have an ESR1 mutation. The second abstract uh, looks at the mutational landscape of patients with hormone receptor positive uh, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, really looking at mutational signatures that could potentially predict for endocrine resistance. Mm -hmm. ESMO 2022 this year has been exceptionally interesting in terms of trying to look at data that looks at patients who've got endocrine resistant disease. A very interesting abstract presented by Matthew Goetz at the Mini Oral Breast uh, Symposium at ESMO 2022 looked at a cohort of patients who had uh, endocrine resistant disease who had progressed on uh, aromatase inhibitor and a CDK4-6 inhibitor. In addition, they had ESR1 mutation that was detected using circulating tumor or DNA, and these patients were randomized to receive either lazoxifen or um, fulvestrant. Very interesting study. This was a signal finding study, and what the authors presented at ESMO 2022 was that there was a strong trend uh, favoring the group of patients in terms of progression free survival if they receive lazoxifen, although not statistically significant. Again, I think very interesting results, a very interesting study design, specifically focusing on patients who've got an ESR one mutation, a mutation that typically uh, causes endocrine resistance. Moreover, they did a post hoc uh, exploratory analysis looking at uh, the clearance of ESR1 at different time points. And what the authors basically showed was that lazoxifen cleared ESR1 mutation a lot more than fulvestrant. More interestingly was that it was able to clear a very hard to treat subtype of mutation of ESR1. So I think very interesting results. Uh, we will need to confirm these uh, results in a more, uh, in a bigger randomized clinical trial. However, going forward, I don't think endocrine monotherapy is the way to go. It's probably going to be combination uh, endocrine therapy. And lazoxifen has had some very interesting results in combination with a CDK4-6 uh, inhibitor already previously presented earlier this year. Another exciting study that was presented this year at ESMO 2022, also looking at endocrine resistance, was a study by Antonio Mara, where he looked at a cohort of patients of over 4,000 patients uh, from the Memorial Sloan Kettering in the United States that had sequencing of their tumors in the metastatic setting. Some very interesting findings suggesting that, at least in the metastatic setting, some of the genomic instability that we're seeing in patients with metastatic breast cancer is actually driven by EPOBAC and HRD signatures. A lot of these patients who have higher levels of EPOBAC signatures tended to have invasive lobular carcinomas as well. A also able to show that in patients with higher levels of EPOBAC and HRD signatures tended to be less sensitive to endocrine therapy as well as CDK4-6 inhibitors by showing us a, sh a shorter progression-free survival compared to other patients whose tumors did not uh, exhibit EPOBAC and HRD signatures. I think some very interesting findings that builds on the work that the group at Memorial Sloan Kettering actually presented last year at San Antonio, showing similar results that in the presence of a BRCA mutation, patients who are getting a CDK4-6 inhibitor tend to have a shorter progression-free survival. The question is, how are we going to target these patients in the future? And I'm, I'm surely waiting for those uh, studies and those results that will be presented in the next upcoming meetings. Mm -hmm.